Absolutely. My name is Alicia Dean and I work in the marketing department here at Graceland. Um, my job entails everything from uh, planning events uh, to hosting celebrities to uh, public relations, which is everything from, you know, working with journalists um, to film crews uh, on site. We actually have a crew on site right now. They're from France, um, which is really exciting. So we do see media from all over the world uh, that come to Graceland. And um, I have been here for 15 years um, as of June this past year. So uh, it's it's been a wild ride. And as I was uh, mentioning before, um, I, I uh, started here in May of 2007 and started as an intern, actually. Um, I was only supposed to be here for about three or four months. Um, and here I am 15 years later. So it was an internship that turned into an extension after extension after extension of, uh, you know, keeping me on here in the marketing department. And, and I honestly can say that I have one of the uh, probably most coveted or, you know, most exciting jobs, uh, especially in this weird entertainment uh, tourism world. It's a, it's a facet of all different things. And Elvis is, uh, Elvis is definitely fascinating. <laughs> I completely agree. Do you mind if we just jump right into student questions? Because I already yeah. got quite a few emailed to me and guys keep them coming in the chat or uh, email. But um, so one of the kids wanted to know, what was it like having a film crew study uh, Graceland in order to create the Elvis movie? Well, what's fascinating is that um, so Baz Luhrmann, if you're familiar with his work, I mean, he just he's only done about six or seven movies in his entire career. And that's because he takes so much time to really dive in and do the research. And so um, Baz came in and stayed here for about, I would say, like a month or two. Um, and really, he's the one that was in our archives, going through files, going through photos and and really doing the research himself. There was, I mean, a small team with him, maybe like two or three people. Um, but for the most part, it was him like getting his hands dirty and going through that process of doing the research. He also went down to Tupelo, Mississippi, which is about 90 minutes from Memphis. And that's where Elvis was born um, to tell that side of the story, too. So it's really fascinating um, just to see on the back um how the when the movie came together and all the details that baz took from his research and there's a lot of easter eggs that he hid in the movie that most people would probably never notice um and one of the things i'll tell you is that there's a scene where they're in graceland they had just moved into graceland and um they're unpacking boxes and there are you know the kitchen aid like mixers like the stand-up mixers there's three of them that you see in the movie and that is because he's he found like receipts for three KitchenAid stand mixers um in our archives and he threw that in there most people wouldn't know that but that's the kind of research that baz did and if you guys haven't seen that movie jeff definitely check out the elvis uh movie obviously with your parents permission and all that kind of stuff but um depending because i don't know how old everyone is so uh one of the kids they wanted to know what is it like if has anyone ever donated elvis items for you guys and what is it like when you guys intake those what's the process of that as someone who works because grayson's kind of a, it's a museum and so um how does that work that's a really good question. Um, so we have had items donated to us in the past. One of the most famous items to ever be donated to us is the cape from the Aloha from Hawaii jumpsuit. Not sure if anybody is familiar. Um, in 1973, we're actually coming up on this 50th anniversary. Uh, Elvis performed the first ever satellite uh, concert that broadcast across the world to over a billion people. Um, 
they the statistic we always say is uh, more more people watched this special than when man landed on the moon. Um, the cape that he wore in that special, you can see Elvis in the show. He he takes it off and throws it to the audience, really to never be seen again. And the long story short is that the person who uh, had the cape um, when they passed away, they actually willed it to us, and so when he passed away, we actually received it. Um, and so really the the process of that is just kind of taking it um, into our archives. Uh, the way that things break down into our archives is basically they get you know, an archival number. Um, we put it into our da database system, which is essentially treated as almost like a Google search. So you can put in an item, you take the picture, uh, mark out a description of what that item is, um, take a conditioning report so if there's you know studs missing if it's dirty if there's a tear um, on the item to truly get the you know whole report of the condition of the item um, and then it goes into our database where you can essentially search and keep track of all the items so but yes people do donate stuff and we used to have an auction uh, back a couple of years ago where people would send us things that would go and get auctioned off um, so we have all sorts of different ways uh, for people to, you know, if you wanted to donate something to us or authenticate an item. Um, so a lot of people, you know, they might have an autograph of Elvis's that might have been on a scarf or something. And, you know, we do charge a fee for that if you want it authenticated where you would say you would send us the item. Uh, we would say, yes, this is either real or not. And then you would get a certificate if it was real to, you know, either have with you forever or you could sell it on eBay if you want it. <laughs> That's great. That's interesting stuff. We have a, a question from Carla and she's in Spain and Carla, you should be able to unmute. You had a couple of good questions. Go ahead and ask either. What inspired you to go on with marketing? You know, it's that's a really funny question only because I I I'm I'm so lucky because I just kind of fell into this um, position and really learned along the way um, about marketing. Um, versus, you know, I, I took hospitality classes in college. And to be quite honest, when I graduated, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And so this whole marketing public relations angle was fairly new to me. I'd taken a couple of business classes, but I wasn't extremely familiar. And I, I more or less just kind of followed my heart, followed my passion into what I knew I was good at. And for me, that was more of, you know, talking to people, um, but also enhancing my skill sets of like, you know, learning how to write for website copy and, um, you know, learn how to write press releases and things like that. So, um, honestly, there was a big part of what we do is driven by obviously this this guy right here it's because he's a person like you you know i care about people um and he has a family like he's a real guy that you know we are we are maintaining his legacy and that to me is is a big driver into what we do every day and i know that's kind of like a roundabout way to answer that question but just in terms of marketing that also has a lot to do with you know protecting his legacy because the way that we you know sell him has to be protected. I mean, you could you could put Elvis's face on anything and sell it, but we have to be very protective about what we do um, and what what deals get signed and, you know, what uh, business partners we work with. And, you know, everything has to be taken into consideration. So we're very protective. And I just think that that has a lot to do with the passion behind my job is to say, you know, I'm here to protect a man, even though we never met, um, but here to protect somebody who is obviously changing people's lives and still in 2022, which is 45 years after he's been gone. So it's very special. Well, we thank you for answering my email and connecting with us. I, I honestly, I threw that one out there in the universe and was surprised you guys hit me back. So we all <laughs> thank you. Um, so we have a question from one of our educators down in Miami. And uh, let's see if he can unmute. Uh, Jason, you should be able to unmute to ask if you can. Here you go. Yeah, I was wondering if you could tell us about some of the most interesting things that we might find in Graceland. Oh, gosh. Well, I think, um, you know, how do you define interesting, right? I think it's all very much uh, per person. And that's because I say that because, you know, you might think the most interesting thing is Elvis's book collection because you're an avid reader, just like Elvis was. Um, a lot of people take uh, 
take what they love and apply it when they're here at Graceland uh, to to Elvis. So, I mean, again, he he loved riding horses. So if you love horse or an animal lover, like that's what you might find the most interesting. Um, so so really, if I'm, you know, thinking about myself, um, you know, I love the stuff that makes him human. So like everybody has a wallet, right? So we have Elvis's wallet. It still has his credit cards in it. It still has the, the family photos in it. Um, and that to me is really special because that's something that he carried with him every single day. So again, we have 1.5 million artifacts in our collection. Um, and that's everything from, you know, cars to receipts to do tons of documents. Um, and so I think the most interesting is hard to say because um, like I said, it, it's really all, you know, on, on your perspective. So, gosh, if I could think of one more example, I would say that, um, I mean, I obviously love any of the clothing um, just because you can like take it and match it to a picture most of the time. And that kind of like makes it real to go, yeah, Elvis wore that and you have proof. Um, but when Elvis visited President Nixon in the White House, um, he actually, it's it's like such a long story. If you don't know it, Google it because it's extremely but on the plane um, from he was coming from L.A. to D.C., he he borrowed um, it was on American Airlines like letterhead on their like paper. And he wrote like a handwritten letter to the president and dropped it off at the White House. And that's how he got his meeting with President Nixon. So <laughs> that is and that in itself is a wild, wild story <laughs> that that's about him and Nixon. So uh, one of the students, I'll, I'll let uh, Alvaro, and Alvaro is in Europe. Alvaro, you should be able to unmute. You had a very good question for Alicia. Uh, are you glad with the decisions that you have made and the objectives you've reached during your career and your life in general? Oh my gosh, I, I, I could go on and on and on about the people that I've met in this business, in this industry through Elvis and Graceland. I mean, I could go on and on about the the business relationships. I mean, I've been able to work with people from Gibson Guitar to uh, Barbie to Pepsi to, um, you know, Paul Frank to Annie Leibovitz. I mean, I have been able to meet so many people, Austin Butler included, um, and I was able to meet Baz Luhrmann. I, I can't even begin to tell you because I am such a big Baz Luhrmann fan personally. I just thought, how is this even possible that I get to meet Baz Luhrmann through work and he's doing an Elvis movie? Like it's it's just beyond me. Um, but then to the people that I have friendships with, like there, there are so many Elvis fans that they come here every single year, twice a year, three times a year um, that have kind of you know, become family, um, people that I get to work with are like our performers that we hire, um, multiple times a year to the fans that, you know, I, I get to see and talk to, and, you know, they want to, they want to love you too, just as much as they love Elvis. So it, it really, my whole, my whole Facebook and Instagram feed are Elvis fans who post every single day, um, either about Elvis or, or what they're doing when they come to Graceland. It, it really is amazing. I have friends from all over the world, um, even, even in, you know, the UK and, uh, Spain and all of the countries that you've mentioned that Elvis has really shown me that you know memphis is on the map because i'm born and raised a memphian i'm from memphis and um it's it's really been wild to see that people from all over the world come here uh to to cherish elvis and it that that means a lot to me so i've just i'm beyond thankful um for this opportunity and i always say you know right place right time and i'm this is where i'm supposed to be so that's, that's wonderful. And uh, so we'll go with a few more student questions and we'll let you go. Um, Marco in uh, Europe, he wanted to know what kind of cars do you guys have at Graceland? I know it's quite a few and you guys even have an airplane if you want to talk about that. <laughs> 
We do. We have lots of Elvis's cars. And honestly, we should have more. But Elvis was known for giving cars away. Um, he was just he was known to give anything away. If you walked up to him and complimented him and said, Elvis, I like that ring, he was going to take it off and hand it to you. Um, so that's that's just who he was. But in terms of the cars, I mean, obviously, we have the famous pink Cadillac um, that is, again, notably probably the most famous car in the collection. Um, we have uh, Priscilla's Mercedes that he bought her. We have um, a 1956 Lincoln Continental. Uh, we have a, a, um, a, a Stutz Blackhawk, which was, we can't ever really say like that was Elvis's favorite car to drive. I mean, he liked driving them all, right? But this, this particular Stutz Blackhawk, um, he drove towards the end of his life. And the there's a funny story behind it. Um, it was actually ordered, Frank Sinatra ordered it. And the day that it came in uh, to the showroom, Elvis went and uh, he was he was in the showroom. And as the story goes, we have a stud. So Elvis was able to convince the people at studs that he needed to have that car instead of Frank Sinatra. So uh, so we have that. So we have many, many cars. Like, like you said, we do have a an airplane that Elvis, uh, he bought. It was a Conair. 880 i believe and he essentially um bought it completely gutted the inside i mean it's a massive plane and uh called it his flying graceland so it was essentially um taken and there's a conference room there's a bedroom uh there's a lounge area it's 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 really a there's 24 karat gold plated seat belts um it was <laughs> truly all this traveled in style so it's really neat that is wild i wasn't i wasn't where it was that big <laughs> so one of the kids he he had wanted to know because his mom works at porsche did he ever get a porsche at any point do you know that you know of? no i don't i don't think that there's a porsche in the collection no mm -mm. okay so uh let me let jana ask a question jana go ahead and unmute you had a very good question for alicia that i thought was good have you ever had the opportunity to meet anyone from elvis's family uh, yes, I have definitely met people from Elvis's family. So, I mean, what what I get to do as part of my job is uh, putting on um, what we call like our main Elvis events, if you will. So during um, his birthday in January, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, January 8th, um, and then during August, uh, when his passing was, uh, we put together events that the fans, Elvis fans will come to Memphis and celebrate his life and legacy. And at a lot of uh, that we host, we have the family members come in at certain times. And so I've I've worked with Priscilla for years. Um, she's absolutely lovely. Um, and she's been a great spokesperson for um, the estate, the home, um, us, our, our company. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, she lived it. So she absolutely has the amazing stories of of Elvis and what it was like to be married to him. And I've worked with his daughter, uh, Lisa Marie as well. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's quite fascinating to, again, the layers of the job, you know, go from, you know, dealing with the family to dealing with fans to dealing with, uh, you know, potential, you know, business partners on different deals to film crews. So, I mean, we're really, um, we're really all over the place, but so uh for our final student question one of the students in um in france they wanted to know what is your best selling uh item for souvenirs when it comes to elvis stuff that you know of mm, it's a really good question i would say that we sell these like elvis sunglasses like the gold like sunglasses those are probably like the best seller on campus like when you come here like tons of people buy the gold sunglasses to wear um but you know i mean we have everything from coffee mugs to t-shirts to socks um i mean it's just kind of all over the place but i would say those sunglasses are probably number one that's awesome and uh real quick one a uh, few of the kids want to know how close in your opinion is the biopic with reality percentage wise would you give it yeah i would say that the movie is 90 percent accurate the things that aren't accurate is if you are paying attention and most people again wouldn't know this but we knew the fans would pick up on this um it's more of chronological uh music 
So if there's a, there's a scene in the movie um, where Elvis had been drafted into the army and he's singing a song from the movie King Creole, which he, if you're going chronologically, that song had not been out and he had not gone into the movies yet because he had was just being drafted into the army. So those things are kind of taken with creative freedom, if you will. It was like the song matched perfectly with that scene and that's how they chose to do it. And honestly, that that stuff doesn't bother me. Um, but some fans probably were like, that's that's incorrect. And it's like, well, you know, you just kind of have to go with it. But but so I would say, yeah, for the most part, 90 percent of the movie is is factual with with some creative liberties at hand. So um, we will go with a couple more questions. Is that all right? Because I keep having yeah. to come in, but I don't want to keep you too long. Yeah, so that's great. one of our kids, I'll let, I'll let Jose ask this. Jose, go ahead. Uh, you should be able to unmute to ask Alicia your question. You had a very good question. And I thought it was pretty pertinent with why we're here today. Go ahead, bud. Okay. Hello. Cool. Um, I want to know if Elvis study anything apart uh, from music? <laughs> you know what's funny is that, so Elvis actually failed music in school. Hmm. Um, <laughs> Elvis, Elvis uh, was one of those that he, um, he could hear it and then play it. Um, so he actually didn't, didn't really, uh, like the studies, um, and went to high school and then that, that was it. So, um, outside of that, there wasn't much, I mean, now I will say Elvis was an avid reader. Like we have tons of books in our collection and Elvis was very interested, um, in reading and studying he was very spiritual um so there are a lot of books on um you know religion and he always said that you know he wasn't going to um, miss out on heaven due to a technicality so there's lots of books on religion so i will say that if he had to study something else and he wasn't really studying but reading um was about religion that, yeah, you can tell, like, uh, you know, if you're reading, like, a lot in his background that he has, you know, such a uh, religious background and just very passionate about his faith. Um, so one of our final questions is, comes from Leah, and she wanted to know, which is the room in Graceland that you find personally most interesting? Ooh, uh, the rooms that I love the most are the two rooms downstairs which would be the tv room and the pool room and i i like them because of their decor the most interesting that which would probably mean the most stories per se um is probably the jungle room and that's because there are there was a lot of activity in there um i say that because elvis actually recorded part of two albums in that room um it was in the 70s when he was tired of going into the studio i believe it was like maybe 76 um that they brought in the rca recording truck from nashville Park <laughs> and uh and they had recording sessions in that room so there's just a lot of history in there and it was also a family room like there's home home video footage of uh them celebrating priscilla's birthday in that room um so i feel like if walls could talk the jungle room probably had uh some of the most interesting stories um and it's just a cool room in general and elvis never called it the jungle room uh that was a nickname that was given to the room when we opened for tours in 1982 a travel writer came in and gave it the nickname and the name stuck Wow, that is wild. And um, one last one. Do you guys have his first guitar ever? Or is, does anyone have that anywhere? Do you know? We do not have that. That actually is kind of one of those someone claims to have it. Um, and there's really no way to authenticate that story. So it's kind of one of those sitting in, sitting in limbo of like, is it real? Is it not? The world may never know. But um, we think we we know who has it he's actually here in memphis but do we know that it's the actual one we're not certain so got it <laughs> so before we let you go i asked this of all of our guests and uh we i just want to know is there any advice that you could give to these kids as they go off into the world as someone like yourself who has such an interesting career what kind of advice would you have for these kids as they try and figure out what kind of lives they want to live yeah so my um my advice is yes 
it is definitely great to get your degree and study and go through with school because that will it will carry you far um but also it's it's really about the the people that you know and i will say i obviously from my story i wasn't like gung-ho passionate about elvis i fell into that um and i got really lucky and so i would say like you know follow your passion but also let life happen um and you know take the risks like i said if i would have told my mom absolutely not and pushed her off and said no i would have I obviously wouldn't be sitting here today um but you know life happened and there have been other opportunities that have been knocking at my door that i just said you know not yet not yet there's got to be free for everything and I, I say, you know, again, let life happen yet yeah, study, but at the same time, you know, make the contacts and, you know, cherish the contacts and maintain the contacts that you have um, and, and build and grow the contacts. I actually, um, I, I was working with in uh, a, a, a class from the SMU in Texas um, students. And I was like, please feel free to reach out to me and connect with me on LinkedIn and keep up with me um, because you never know, I might need someone in a years that I'm looking for a particular role, you know, so you just still never know. It's all about networking. And then, you know, obviously passion, passion definitely drives you, but I didn't know what I was going to be doing. Um, it just kind of, you know, happened. Um, and at the end of the day, like, just be nice to people. Like being nice is honestly the thing that I feel like carries that will carry you forever because if if you're nice people are going to remember that and they're going to you know just <sighs> carry it with them and that's something that you you know uh it doesn't cost anything to to be nice so i always say you know be nice and be kind especially being in tourism i want people to have the most amazing experience they're going to maybe meet me once and and then move on and i always want them to remember that they had a great time here so that's that's the best advice i think well we thank you so much and thank you for that advice and thank you so much for your hospitality today we uh appreciate it greatly and i always do this for our guests i'm going to end the meeting for all in a second but before i do i'm going to let everyone unmute and can we all say thank you to alicia for taking time out of her very valuable day to come talk to you guys about thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.